Hi, I'm Tessa and welcome to Little Lady Homestead. So with me here, I have samples from our two sets of meat birds that we are raising this year. I have a Cornish cross here and <laughs> a Delaware broiler over here. And I just wanted to give you an update on my Delaware broilers and kind of give a comparison to what I've seen with our Cornish crosses. Now granted, this isn't a one-to-one -one direct experiment to compare the two because you can tell the major size difference between the two, partly because the Cornish crosses are bred to just be massive, massive animals that grow very fast, much faster than other chicken breeds, um, but also because the Cornish crosses are three weeks older. So the Delaware broilers are much smaller. <laughs> Um, and I think that's more than just their age. I think the Cornish crosses were bigger when they were five weeks. Uh, but still, I just wanted to talk about some of the differences between raising a more heritage breed um, versus the Cornish cross if you wanted to raise meat chickens. So I won't talk too much about these Cornish crosses because they are a more standard meat chicken breed. And I did raise them last year. So if you're interested in seeing my first experience ra raising Cornish crosses, I'll link that video in the description so you can watch that. But these meat chickens, the Cornish crosses, have been pretty good. Like I said, this is our second time raising them. Last year, we raised them right here on pasture and I used electric netting with a shelter and I would rotate them every couple days or so. But we did experience quite a bit of losses, uh, both from hawks and also just neighboring and stray dogs that got onto our property and got the chickens. And so this year we are actually raising them in a chicken tractor and we've had zero losses due to predators. I have had one chicken die over the last, let's see, five weeks or six weeks, I think. And I don't know why there was one in there that was just smaller than the others. And so I think there probably was something wrong with it. It wasn't growing appropriately. So the Cornish crosses have done really well and I think they're a great option for a homestead meat bird because they just pack on the pounds so fast. Like I said, that chicken is only eight weeks old and it is humongous. It's probably ready to process now. We won't be processing them until next weekend. Uh, so I don't know, we might have another half pound to pound on them before they get processed. The reason why I wanted to explore different breed options for raising meat chickens is because you cannot breed these Cornish crosses. Chicken! He was too scared to go out into the tall grass. <laughs> The reason why I wanted to explore different chicken breeds uh, for meat birds is because you can't breed these on your own. You have to buy them from a hatchery. And I guess each order that I've been making, we want to raise about 100, 
about 100 to 110 uh, birds for the freezer each year. So I said that, okay, we'll buy about 120 per year. And I think each order of 40 was about $150. And so that's $450 on buying the chicks. And raising your own definitely isn't free because you have to have the breeder chickens and the roosters and you have to feed them throughout the year but it is about half the cost. And so there's that cost aspect of it, but also just, it's a more sustainable option that I will have them here on the farm and I don't have to buy the chicks from the hatchery each year. So even though these guys are great, they grow super fast, I was looking for a different breed. Woohoo! go on, you're okay. So in my research, I found Delaware broilers and I thought that these were really interesting guys and they are a heritage breed. Uh, so I can breed them myself. They have been bred slightly to be bigger than normal Delaware chickens. That's why they're called the Delaware broilers. And I have definitely seen that. They are about twice the size of the chick that we got as a surprise chick with this order. So I'll show you that one. I didn't need the chick. I never need the extra chick, but it worked out for this experiment so I could have a size comparison. So this I think is a Bielfelder. Bielfelder? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, they didn't tell me what it was, but I'm pretty sure it's a little rooster. And he is about half the size of this Delaware broiler, which is pretty cool. So that makes me feel better that the broilers are growing at a faster rate than normal heritage breeds, uh, just not quite as fast as the Cornish cross. So here's the, I think Bielfelder and then the Delaware broiler. So they're doing pretty good. This guy's maybe a pound and a half, uh, maybe a pound. And this guy's probably about a half a pound. When we ordered the Cornish crosses, we also got a free chick. So we got this little Polish here. And so he's three weeks older than these Delawares. Oh, you're okay. And so they are almost the exact same size. So this white one is three weeks older than the Polish, but they're about the same size. So I think that's pretty good that they're growing about two to three weeks ahead of what a normal heritage breed would. So for their growth, even though I don't expect to um, have them be at a weight where we can process them until they're about 18 weeks, 18 to 20 weeks, I'd say, um, I'm happy that they're they have faster growth and they seem to have a pretty good meat distribution as well. So I think that's good. But overall, just weights and meat quality aside, these guys have just been so easy to raise. Raising the Cornish crosses, if you've ever done it, uh, when they're little tiny baby chicks, they can't regulate their body temperature. So you keep them inside under a heat plate or a heat lamp. And during that time, they stink. <laughs> they stink so much. Cornish crosses live and breathe for food and water. They just go crazy for it. So they're just constantly stuffing themselves with food and constantly pooping, constantly. And so every day I would have to either clean the brooder out or at least add new shavings on top because it just became a slimy, stinky mess. And then I think they were in the brooder inside for three weeks and I finally said, I can't stand it anymore. They're going to go outside and I put heat lamps inside of the chicken tractor and just kept the chicken tractor close to the house so that an extension cord could reach them. Now, as soon as I got them outside, these little babies came and took their place in the brooder. And it was like night and day. I had forgotten how easy it is to raise normal chicks uh, because I hadn't done it in probably a year and they didn't make as much mess. They ate half the amount. They pooped a quarter of the amount and they're just nicer chickens. See, this guy is barely even moving and that guy was doing good too. His crop was just absolutely full to the brim because he ate and drank so much. Uh, but those Cornish crosses don't have the nicest temperaments. I remember 
uh, about a year ago, maybe a little bit more, I went to a local farmer's market and I bought some chicken from a local farmer who uh, was raising them like this out on pasture. And I, I asked her, or I kind of told her that I was interested in getting meat birds and raising them, but I wasn't sure if I could do it. Uh, I, I don't like the idea of killing or hurting any animals. However, I know that chickens die, you know, millions of chickens die every year in commercial poultry farms. Chickens who didn't have that much free space, who never saw sun or felt the grass. And so if I'm going to eat chickens, it would make me feel a whole lot better if I knew that they had a nice life here out in the fresh air and the sunshine and the green grass where they could eat grass and bugs. So uh, I always knew that I felt that way, but still you, it, there comes the day where you have to process the chicken and that's pretty sad. So I was talking to that farmer about that and she said, don't worry you won't feel bad about Cornish crosses. They aren't nice, they smell, you know, they're, they're still chickens. They're, you still want to give them the best you possibly can and give them a really nice life, but you won't feel the same way as you do about your laying hens. I said, okay, okay. And when the day came, I still, it was still one of the hardest days. And I'm sure each time we do it, it'll be one of the hardest days each time. It's worth it and I'm so happy that I could give them good lives, but it's still not easy for me. So with that said though, these are nice chickens. <laughs> They're really sweet. I think this is a female. We're just barely starting to tell which ones have bigger combs and um, maybe possibly their tail feathers are coming in a little bit more. Um, but I could just pick them up. A lot of times they'll fly up to the edge of the chicken tractor and I'll just pick them up and they would never peck at me or go after me. They're not aggressive. They're just nice chickens. And so from that perspective, I really enjoy that. If we are going to raise meat birds, you know, two to three times a year, the difference between having a really nice chicken like this and having one that's pretty aggressive and really stinky, I would choose this one. I have no idea if this will work, but I'm going to try to get the four of these chickens in the same shot so that you can see the size difference. I see, wait, what are we doing? Oh, you're okay. All right. All right, little ones. <laughs> so of course they're not gonna stay together. There's the difference. So these two are the same age and then those two are the same age. But look at the difference. They're, all of them are only three weeks apart. So it's pretty amazing the genetics, how fast the Cornish crosses can grow. But also I'm pretty impressed by the Delaware that they are significantly bigger than the more heritage breeds. They're thoroughly confused. So we got these guys on a trial basis to see if we would really like the breed because we raised those Cornish crosses last year and they were okay. They definitely did the job and we got 25 really good chickens for the freezer. And so we knew that we liked the Cornish crosses, but if there was something better, we would definitely try it. Even though there is a really big difference in their personality and just the ease in keeping them, we won't really know probably until about beginning to middle of August when we process some of these guys, whether their meat quality is the same or maybe better. Um, also their weights, are they the same uh, when they're full size? And so we'll take a look at that once we process some of these then and we can compare and contrast the actual meat quality. Um, but for now, it's just been nice raising them. I really do like them. And so if in August we process some and say, okay, we just really like 
um, the taste of the meat because when you don't grow them as fast, they are a lot more flavorful. Uh, just like our pigs that we raised, we love the meat so much because they got kitchen scraps. Their uh, pork chops are like steaks. They're delicious. And so I'm hoping to see the same thing in chickens. The older they get, they're not as tender, but they do have more flavorful meat. And so I'm interested to see that. Uh, and if we do really like them, then we will be keeping, let's see, we'll be keeping 12 hens and at least three roosters. That way we will have three separate breeding groups. And I think during the winter, they'll stay with our laying flock, but then during the summer, we're going to keep them in chicken tractors and have them separated so that they can breed in groups. And then um, at a certain interval, and I can't remember how long each uh, male is with each group, um, but we rotate them. That way we reduce the amount of inbreeding and we can continue breeding them without having any uh, negative side effects to having a small gene pool. So that will be the plan. If in August we like them, then we probably won't have time to have them breed this year. We'll probably put them in with our laying flock for the rest of the year. And then uh, next spring, we will separate them and then bre begin breeding them. I'll kind of have to see how the timing works out, but we have, let's see, I think we still have 42 of these guys because that was another thing. I lost quite a few Cornish crosses in the beginning and I've lost a couple still since then. So we're down to 35 Cornish crosses and we ordered 40, they gave us 42. So we've lost seven. And with these guys, we lost one. <laughs> and we still, let's see, I think we've only lost one Cornish cross in the last five weeks. So we may lose one of these just by circumstance, but from here on out, they're pretty sturdy. And so our success rate with them, we haven't had as many casualties. So that's another bonus. We have 42 of them. We will pick, like I said, 12 hens, three roosters. I may keep an extra rooster just in case. Um, so that's 16 birds and the rest will process. So we'll choose the, probably the, the biggest, um, the biggest birds and maybe the nicest ones if there's a, a, a decision to make between two really big ones, which one's nicer. Like this one's really sweet. I've just been holding it the whole time and it's just hanging out. So we really want to keep nice, big uh, birds for our breeding program and we've never done anything like this so we'll have to just figure out as we go. Um, but I think it's a good option and if anybody else is looking into breeding their own meat birds, I know there's a lot of popularity around the breast chickens and I think they're great. I would love to have breast chickens as well but they are really expensive you know, 10 to $20 per chick, you know, day old chick. And these guys were the normal, you know, $3 per chick. And so since we've never bred before, I thought that getting into that would be easier with lower overhead. And so far we've had great results with these. So I think, I think it'll work out. Anyway, I just wanted to give you an update on how it's going, how we're liking the Delaware broilers and how our Cornish crosses are doing. Uh, we still have a few more months with these guys and then we will pick out which ones we really love to keep on possibly to breed. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching Little Lady Homestead and I'll see you in my next one. The other cool thing is that the Delawares are still physically capable enough to be normal chickens. <laughs> Like the Cornish crosses would never be able to do this. They're just way too heavy in the, in the breast to climb or run or do anything. So these chickens get to be normal chickens, which I think is really cool.